And now we have Charlotte and Alice who are going to tell us a story. It was her first day back at school. Jenny was taking a message to the school office. She loved taking messages for her teacher. Jenny repeated the messages to her mind as she walked so she wouldn't forget it before she reached the office. It would be a bit embarrassing if she arrived at the office and had forgotten the message. Okay. Tyler was hurrying along the corridor. He was already late and knew that lessons would have started before he got into class. Tyler hated being late, especially when it was his little brother's Tom fault. Why did Tom always lose something just as they were leaving the house? Tyler walked faster and was soon running. He knew he wasn't allowed to run in school, but he just couldn't help it. His classroom was just around the corner and he could hear Mr Lawson telling the class to get their books out. Almost there, then BANG! Tyler found himself on the floor with a squelling quickly forming on his chin. Standing opposite was Jenny rubbing her head and fighting back tears. Why don't you look where you're going? Jenny said. I didn't see you around the corner, protested Tyler. And that's the problem, said Mr Lawson, who hearing the noise had come out of his classroom. You can't see around corners. And you were running, Tyler. Tyler didn't need a reminder that running wasn't allowed in the corridors. But he got one anyway. He apologised to Jenny too. Very soon, ice packs reduced swellings. Jenny and Tyler were back in class, both okay. Jenny even remembered to give the message to the office. Very well read, girls. Excellent. Now, that little story, I think, is a parable. It teaches us something. If you think about it, there's nothing that Jenny could have done to avoid the accident because she couldn't see Tyler coming around the corner. She couldn't avoid it happening. Tyler couldn't see Jenny coming either. But if he hadn't been running, they wouldn't have had the collision. And at the start of the new year, we don't know what is round the corner. We don't know what this year will bring. This time last year, January 2020, we couldn't know what was around the corner that year. We didn't know about the coronavirus and what would happen. It's as if in a year, everything that's gonna happen is just around the corner. And like Tyler, we can't see around the corner. Just like last year, this year is bound to have some surprises. Things will happen that we can't do anything about and we will have to face them as best we can. Now, COVID-19 is a big challenge. We can't change the new lockdown, but we can change our reaction to it. We have a, some control over how we react. For example, we can be thankful for what we can do. We can be thankful for what we have. We can try our best to follow the rules that have been laid down. We can pray for one another. We can phone others up. We can actually ask for prayer. If we're struggling, ask someone, tell someone about it. You know, the Bible says, Galatians 6, 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, I can't bear your burdens if I don't know them, unless God tells me about them or you tell me about them. So I encourage you to share your worries and burdens with others so that we can support one another. Now, people who make New Year's resolutions are trying to do something about their lives. They look at the past year and think about the mistakes they've made or the things they've done that they don't really want to do. And they make a decision, a determination to change something during the year ahead. For example, a good New Year's resolution for Tyler might be, what do you think it would be? Not to run in the corridor again. I think that would be a good one. What about you? Have you made any New Year's resolutions? If not, 
What about trying to have a more positive attitude? For example, let's try to be more thoughtful, forgiving, kind, patient, thankful, honest, resilient, reliable. And what about speaking more encouraging words to one another? I'll be talking a little about that later. But we could make Colossians 3, verse 13 to 15, our New Year's resolution. It says, God loves you. So clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Be tolerant and forgive each other. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Now we're going to say sorry to God for things that we might have done or thought and said wrong in the past week. But before I pray, and you can re re read the bold bits with me if you'd like to, we just have a few seconds quiet so you can think up anything to God that you might want to, to say sorry to him for. We are sorry for saying, thinking, and doing things that have upset or hurt others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We're sorry for our selfishness and lack of love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are sorry for our stubbornness and lack of trust in you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May our God of love and power forgive us and free us from those things we are doing do, do wrong. Heal and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and strengthen us to new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, what I wanted to do in this service was just to ask anyone what their highlights were of 2020, perhaps a sentence or two. I know it was a really challenging year, but I think that would have been good and send a microphone round so anyone could share. But we can't do that. So I've managed to text a few people and ask what their highlights were from last year. And here's a few of them. Sandy, Nikki and Jackie all said something similar. And it was this, that their highlight was more quality time with family, taking life slower and appreciating more of nature on walks. Maybe that was the case of some of you. Ian's highlight was actually getting through 2020. Tony and Jackie Malay said that their highlight was the social distance picnic they had with family and seeing their four grandchildren again. Hannah said, meeting new friends and the Messy Church bags were highlights of 2020. Just a note, the Messy Church will be starting up again uh, on the 7th of February, so keep an eye out for that and the publicity. And Isabel, Hannah's daughter, said she loves the, the children's club on a Tuesday and she tells everyone about it. Well done, Isabel, keep it up. Felicity said her highlight was giving birth to Leo. And Leo is growing well. A lady who wishes to remain anonymous said that 2020 was an emotional roller coaster. I'm sure some of us can identify with that. Her granddaughter was born on the 18th of March. And her son, who was a former heroin addict, has been free from drugs for some years, and he passed his master's, master's degree in psychology this year and is now a practicing psychologist as well as being a single dad. So a big well done to him. Steve Bostock said the birth of his grandchild child on the 4th of April, 6th of April rather, in Germany was a highlight and when they all met together in real life in August. Matthias and Charlotte, their highlight was the birth of their son, Ezra. Maybe my highlight, I might pick out two, I think, is that the Tuesday Kids Club, one of the meetings we had here 
back in October, probably it was, was when the children prayed for one another and others' needs spontaneously. That was really good. So well done, kids. Keep it up. And another highlight was, I think it's amazing, that the crib service on Christmas Eve, we had 700 views at that. So that's pretty amazing. So we thank God for that. Now we're going to have the children, Choose the Children's Club singing three action songs. It was recorded last year, uh, but it's great fun. And my challenge to you is to see if you can keep up with them when they get to God is good to me. It goes like this. You point your fingers up, God, then switch to your thumbs is good to me. God is good to me. So that's your challenge, see if you can keep up with them. But enjoy. The words are there. You can join in if you'd like to. Yeah, we're doing we do that one because I've taught it. Ready? One, two, three. Who's the king of the jungle? Who's the king of the sea? Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you. J E S U S. Yes. He's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Ooh, ooh. What's more? Who's the king of the jungle? Ooh, ooh. Who's the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? Our town, you. J E S U S. Yes! He's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea, bubble, bubble, bubble. Ready? God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. No, he is alive. Feeling all over me. Feeling in my heart. Feeling in my feet. Feeling in my heart. Feeling in my soul. We feeling all over me. Let's do it a bit quicker and we'll jump up even higher. God's not dead. No, he is alive. God's not dead. No. So we live all over me. Whose favourite song is We Do is God is Good to Me? Okay, let's have a go at that one then. Ready? Get your fingers moving. One, two, three. God is Good to Me. God is Good to Me. He gives me things to eat. I get to God is Good to Me. God is Good to Me. God is Good to Me. He gives me strength to swim. God is good to me. Excellent. Three do it fast. And then we do super so we do fast first, then super sonic. Ready? God's good to me. God is good to me. He gives me lips to eat my chips. God's good to me. God's good to me. God's good to me. He gives me jelly to fill my belly. God is good to me. God is good to me. God is good to me. He gives me strength to swim and like God is good to me. Who wants to do super sonic? Keep up with me, ready? One, two, three. God's good to me. God's good to me. He gives me little feet, my chips. God's good to me. God's good to me. God's good to me. He gives me jelly to fill my belly. God's good to me. God's good to me. God's good to me. He gives me strength to swim the land. God's good to me. One more super duper sonic. Ready? Ready? Hyper super sonic. Yeah, I want that. Ready? One, two, three. God's good to me. God's good to me. Sweet my chips, God is good to me, God is good to me, God is good to me, gives me jelly through my belly, God is good to me, God is good to me, God is good to me, give me strength through the leg, God is good to me, well done, give me strength to me. 
Great fun. Well done. It's good fun to praise God. Um, now we have a reading from Matthew by Remy and Leo. The reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to chapter 4, verse 1. At the time Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River, he came to John and wanted John to baptise him. But John tried to stop him. John said, why do you come to me to be baptised? I should be baptised by you. Jesus replied, let it be this way, for now it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptise Jesus. As soon as Jesus was baptised, he came up out of the water. At that moment, heaven opened and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and landing on him. And the voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. I am very pleased with him. After this, Jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Wow, red boys, excellently done. The words that we speak to one another are powerful and they can change our lives in a good way or a bad way, a positive or a negative way. Kind and truthful words can make a massive difference to us. They can build us up, encourage us, spur us on, comfort us, and change us. This is a true story about the power of speaking kind words. One day, a year six teacher at primary school gave to her class a piece of A4 to every child. And she asked them to write the names of each of their classmates down the pa paper, leaving a gap between each name. After they'd done that, she said to them, what I would now like you to do is to write the kindest thing you can about that person, about each classmate writes the nicest thing you can say about them. They took some time doing that, but when they finished, the teacher took the papers in. Over the weekend, she typed them up. So she put a child's name on the top of the piece of paper and then listed all the positive things, the kind things, the good things that their classmates had said about them. So every child had 26 or so comments. Monday morning came and the teacher gave the papers out to the children and she let them read them to themselves and before long there were smiles and they were telling each other things and she could overhear some of the comments that the children were saying. Things like, I never knew I meant that so much to people. I didn't know people liked me so much. I didn't know I was good at that. And it was a really good exercise. And so the children went on to secondary school, went to college, went to work, and time went on. Now, one of the young people in her class called Mark, he grew up and he went in the army and he fought for his country. Unfortunately, he was killed in serving his country. And at the funeral, his teacher actually went, the primary school teacher that he'd known all those years ago. And after the funeral, Mark's mum and dad came up to her and said, we want to show you something. <clears throat> this was found on Mark when he was killed. Dad opened his wallet and took out a piece of paper that was worn and had been folded and, and sellotaped many times. Without looking, the teacher knew what it was. It was that list of all the comments his classmates had said about him. Mark's mum said, thank you so much for doing that. Mark treasured it. Many of his classmates were, or ex-classmates were always also there at the funeral and they too had gathered round. And they 
also admitted that they had saved their pieces of paper. God wants us to hear kind and truthful words because they help us. Sadly, often negative and unkind words are spoken to us. And unfortunately, we seem to find these easier to believe or to remember than the kind, positive and truthful words. Now, Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan at a turning point in his life. He was 30 years old. He'd been a carpenter from boyhood, but now he was about to start his PhD, his preaching, healing and deliverance ministry. And at that turning point, God spoke some amazing things to him. The boys read it. Verse 17, he said, you are my son. I'm pleased with you. I love you. So God spoke the truth to Jesus, affirming him, telling Jesus that he was God's own son, that God loved him and that God was pleased to him with him. Jesus needed to hear these words because it was right at the start of his ministry and he would have known that it was going to be tough. He was going to face rejection, ridicule and ultimately a painful death. But he knew that God was with him. It's great when people speak encouraging words to us, and it's a good thing actually to write them down. If someone says something positive to you or how you've helped them, put it in a diary. Look at it again, because they're good things to encourage us. But the best words we can ever hear are words spoken to us by God, because his words are always true, and he wants to bless us, encourage us, spur us on, build us up, comfort us. Sometimes God speaks challenging words to us. He speaks to our conscience, showing us that something might be wrong in our lives, that he wants us to change. When we turn to Jesus to begin to follow him, God says to us what he did to Jesus. You're my son or my daughter. I love you. I'm pleased with you. Do you know the Bible says that we bring, bring pleasure to God? Have you ever thought about that? You actually bring pleasure to God. Psalm 147 verse 11, if you want to look it up. These sort of words are powerful words because they're spoken to us by God and therefore they're true. How do we hear God speak in these wonderful words to us? Most of us are not going to hear God speak in a loud, audible voice like he did to Jesus. But many of us, We'll hear God speaking to us through our thoughts as we quietly sit before him. Perhaps as we read our Bibles, suddenly a verse might jump out at us and speak into our spirit or our heart. Sometimes it might be through another Christian. Sometimes it might be through a service, perhaps like this. But the most important thing is that God wants to speak to us. He wants us to hear encouraging words and he wants us to hold on to them so that they make a difference in our lives. What I'd like to be, do now before I close is just to be very quiet for a moment. I'd encourage you to close your eyes because God is here with me and Ian. He's here with you wherever you are. Listen to this by his spirit. And I'm just going to say some words that are in the Bible that God says about you. I'll read them slowly. And as I read them, just let them come into your spirit. Hear them and let them sink in, knowing that what God is saying about you is true. So hear him speak these words to you today. You are my son or you are my daughter. I love you totally and unconditionally. You bring me pleasure. So do not fear, for I am with you. I will strengthen you and help you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. 
Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I chose you before I made the world to belong to me. I chose you to be adopted as my child. Hold on to these words today and tomorrow and for the rest of your lives. And just to conclude, Jesus began his earthly ministry with God speaking to him positive, affirming words. And also, he received the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Early in this year, you can begin a journey or continue a journey with God. Today, hear God saying to you, you're my child. With you, I'm well pleased. I love you. And today, we can receive the Holy Spirit who helps us in our lives to live for God and to follow him.